Welcome back to Soup to Nuts for Lightroom 5 from Adobe. In this next section, we are now in video 4. We will be covering the basics of how to configure and set up Lightroom. Now that you've downloaded, you've proceeded with the install, you've selected your master catalog, and now we're talking about your initial setup and configuration settings. So inside your Windows 7 system, you're going to go under Edit, and you're going to go under preferences. This is going to be where you're going to set up your basic preferences. And these are going to be the four different uh, areas that we're going to talk about within the edit section for the Lightroom setup on your system. Because these are where the four key things are when it comes to configuring and setting up your Lightroom system. So the very first thing we're going to talk about here are your Lightroom preferences. When you click on Lightroom preferences, you're going to see this window inside of here. And it's not going to allow me to resize this past that uh, 1280 by 720 dialog box. So my apologies if a little bit of this is cut off here, but you're gonna see a whole bunch of tabs inside of here. And by default, it's gonna come up on file handling. I'm gonna jump to that in just a minute. I wanna talk about general first. So under general, we're gonna see uh, an option here for English and all a bunch of other languages. Um, you can go from German, French, Spanish, all the way through. Obviously, I'm gonna leave mine on English. Then you have some other options here where you can show the splash screen during a startup. Some people really like to see that when an application is launching just so they get the visual cue that the program is launching on their system. I am like that myself, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. The other thing that you have an option for in setting up your Lightroom 5 system is whether or not you want it to automatically check for updates. I will always encourage you to automatically check for updates. You never want this to get out of date, primarily because there are security flaws out there that come out with such regularity. If you don't keep it current, you can open up your system to vulnerabilities and hacks, and no one ever wants to open up their system like that. So leaving this checked will just allow Adobe to send you the latest updates. It's not Big Brother watching you. It's you checking with Adobe to see if there's updates for software licenses that you've paid for. So that being the case, here's the next thing that we're going to speak to here. This is uh, specifying the catalog that we set up in our prior video. If you ever want to change your video catalog, excuse me, if you ever want to change your image catalog to another one, or if you want to create a new one, you can do that from inside of here. Now, of course, we're doing the soup to nuts, so at this point, we're assuming you do not have a prior catalog, so we're going to go ahead and leave that blank. Here you see the import options. You can show the import dialog when a memory card is detected. Basically what that means is if you plug in a memory card to your system, periodically what will happen is when you plug it in, you will get a Windows notification, much like the one that you're about to see come up here on my system. So we see this notification here now. This is my Windows system asking what it wants me to do with this file. If you want to, you can have Lightroom use that same dialog for you. If there's images on your memory card, it will automatically launch Lightroom and take you to the import dialog. All right, so that's one option you can check inside of here. I usually leave that unchecked just for personal preferences. I don't like my system telling me what application to use. I like telling my system what application to use. Kind of like the tail wagging the dog is the application or the analogy I'll use there for these applications. So I leave that unchecked. Next option down here is select the current previous import collection during import. I actually recommend that you leave that checked because that way you can keep some of your collections intact. Okay, so I'll recommend you leave that checked. Next option down is ignoring camera generated folder names when naming folders. I would highly recommend that you check this option off when you're getting things set up. Basically what this is going to do is this is going to ignore anything that looks like this. Bear with me one quick second. Actually, I'm right there. So there you go. So you can see right inside here, here's the camera folder name. That's the 119 underscore 10. I don't want my folders getting imported like that because that means nothing to me. So I do want Lightroom to do that. I want them to ignore the camera generated folder when naming folders inside the system. I want to generate my own names, right? I want to set this up my own particular unique weird way. Okay, so you can set things up however you want. I would not recommend using the camera folder structure just because that 11910 really means nothing or that 103 GoPro or whatever folder you have from whatever um, 
recording mechanism you have, whether it's a GoPro camera or an SD camera card or an SLR, you're going to have different folder structures coming in from multiple camera types. So if you want to retain those, you're going to be get if you want to see all those different folders, you're going to get multiple different types inside of here. So I recommend ignoring that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to recommend that you do is check out this option to treat JPEG files next to raw files as separate photos. I want to see these myself. I want to see a JPEG file versus a raw file so I know which one I'm editing when it comes to Lightroom 5. If you're not familiar with what a raw file is, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and uncheck that. If you're familiar with raw, you'll f understand the benefits of raw and we can talk about that in another video if you want. But for now, I'm going to recommend that you check this off if you ever shoot in raw. Again, if you don't shoot in raw, don't check it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't check it. If you do shoot in raw, go ahead and check that off so you can make that distinction. Uh, completion sounds, again, this is just system preferences, whatever you want. When finished importing, do you want an audio system to sound or not? And you can see all the different options inside of here. I don't like audio sounds on my system. I find that them a little annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and leave all of those off. The last thing I'll talk about under the general preferences are your catalog settings. So inside of here, you can see what the catalog settings are. Here's the general tab. You also have file handling and metadata. So when it comes to catalog settings, this speaks to your backup process. Okay, What are you going to do when you exit out of the system? Do you want this system to back up your catalog for you once a week when exiting? And here are the other options. So you can choose never, once a month, once a week, once a day every time Lightroom exits or when Lightroom next exits. So you can specify these in here. You can see my backup schedule is weekly. Again, this will be a matter of personal preference. I've gone on diatribes before about backups, so I'm going to go ahead and avoid that right now. The other thing I'm going to talk about inside of here is file handling and metadata. So on file handling, this speaks to preview cache. And if you're going to set up your preview cache, you want to keep this size relatively low. You don't want to keep this too big because this is what's going to store your thumbnail previews right so you don't want this to overtake your entire system so kind of keep it lower you really shouldn't see anything anything over I'd say maybe five megs on here because these are going to be super small thumbnails uh, standard preview size will be 1440 pixels uh, you can change it if you want here are all the options 1440 is usually fine for me so I'll leave that uh, preview quality is set to medium I'll leave that as well then you can set your system to discard your previews after every 30 days or if you want you can change the schedule here's the other options you have when it comes to discarding your thumbnail previews some people never want to discard them some want, some people want them gone every day some people every week some people every 30 days 30 days is fine with me because i'm not taking much out, out of my system resources anyway the last thing inside of here is you can specify your import sequence number do you want to increment things by one number every time you do an import. So it'll set, have the same file name imported uh, sequentially, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or if you don't want that, then you would set that at zero, right? And then the photos imported will show you the count right here. So here we see zero photos that have been imported. Last thing when it comes to the catalog settings is your metadata. So here's an option where you can set up different types of metadata. I'll talk more about this in the next video because this can get to be a rather tedious discussion. So for now, just know that you have the metadata options inside the catalog settings when you're talking about setting up your Lightroom preferences system. Feel free to come on back in video five where we continue talking about your Lightroom preferences setup.